you are here in the show, congratulations to you. Um, we are so a couple of a couple of words, a couple just a couple of words, then we'll get into what do we, you know, a lot of people want to know, what do you look for as a, a juror? How do you how do you select? And I'll tell you a little bit about how I do it. And then I'm sure from juror to juror, it's, it's a little bit different, but there's probably a lot of commonality. My jurying starts with what, how I define art. Art, for me, is about giving a response. As creatures, human beings, we are presented daily, hourly, every second of our lives with the glory of creation or the beauty of what's around us. We are a very unique segment of this society of humanity in that we have the sensitivities, the, the, the I want to call it uh, spirit, soul, eyes, but we are affected differently than most of the population that comes in the form, you know, as artists. That comes in the form of poets, songwriters, you know, uh, musicians, um, any, anybody who touches the arts. We are a very different breed of people, but we are the voice. And we experience the world around us and we tell others about it. So everything that we produce is a response to an original statement. <coughs> And so if you look around this room, the reason why I'm going into this with you is if you realize that and if you accept that definition of art, that art is giving an answer back, it takes the competition out of art and the production of art because every piece is unique. And your hands will create a piece that mine cannot and yours and yours and yours and your eyes and your ears will experience this world differently than I do, and differently than most of those fellow human beings that are around us. But we are very unique. So to be on a wall like this, presenting work like this, is, is a celebration. And that's what I really want tonight to be about. And it's not a competition. Even though we give awards, really what we're doing is we're looking at the community and the presentation <coughs> And we're saying, of this group, here are some exceptional pieces that we want to just use as guideposts for, for tomorrow. <coughs> and to celebrate that with them. And the work, and the time, and the commitment that went into producing it. So that's what I look for. I look for what is the response? What's the story that's on the wall? And story doesn't have to be narrative. Like when you look at a piece and you say, oh, that is a lighthouse painting. You know, that's a narrative. It can be about color. Or it can be about light and dark. Or it can be, it, the story can be many things. And that's what's so wonderful about art, is that it is all these wonderful things that, that help us to see our world and experience our world. So the very first thing I look for, and as I stand in the center of a room and I survey the space, is I, I'm looking for pieces that are calling to me saying, come and see, come and see, come and see. And those pieces are the ones that I marked first in my head. And so I, I knew that piece over there, that piece there, that piece. Didn't know why, but I knew they were calling to me, right? Saying, come and see. Then I walked the show. And when I walk the show, I get up close and personal to each piece, and I try to experience the piece. I look for things like composition, uh, format. Why did the artist choose this format to tell this story? But, <clears throat> or color, or value. How did the artist use this value? How did the artist tell the story by the placement of the figures or the center of interest, sometimes it's called center of interest or <coughs> focal point. Why did the artist choose that place? Why did the artist choose that format, that composition? So I'm looking for those things up close. And in that process, 
some of the things that said come and see fall away a little bit because maybe it's not as strong a composition <coughs> as the one over here. And in a show like this, even though you want to give awards to all of them, every juror says that, right? <laughs> That's true. <coughs> you cannot do that. I was telling a couple uh, earlier this evening, uh, best of show through three will be probably easier because there's pieces that have those components I was talking about, but the juror's choice or the juror's picks, then it got really ugly. <laughs> it took time uh, because I had no experience and there were on the wall, there, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm throwing just numbers out there. In a 60 painting show, there may be 30 paintings that all, 40 paintings, I don't know, arbitrary, the numbers are arbitrary, that could have been awarded in the award. Right? Because of what the story was, what they were saying, their response to the response. Right? So, I don't like it to be about the award, but it is at a certain point. But I really want to direct you to think if there's an award on the wall or you're going to receive an award, congratulations, good for you. But fellow artists, see those as, um, see those as light posts in the distance. Things for us to take in, and appreciate and, and goals. Uh, something that I can work toward. And maybe something that an artist is doing that I just love. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go home and start working on that. But that's how I drew the show. And so when we finally got them all done and got them all categorized, uh, then I stood here and I asked myself, well, have you really picked the ones that you really think should be the loudest? And I'm going to say that I did. That I did. Okay, so that's how I drew the show. The things about this that are stunning, I mean, again, uh, enjoying the piece from this distance, here's what I see. I see a very strong A composition to this painting. And if you follow the light in the painting up to the upper right hand corner, where there, you know, if you get closer, you see there's a, a figure, a shape of a figure in that corner. So there's a very strong A type composition to that piece. It's off centered and it's, it leads your eye. What it does is it leads the eye to that place. And the way she used light in this piece, with the light in the upper uh, right hand corner coming down uh, into the lower right and then across. Um, very effective. It's just very, it, it creates a visual journey for the eye that's just really wonderful. Uh, you always, and then there's all these happy little things that happen as you transit across the piece, the green in the upper left, as you journey across it, there's just lots of fun things for you to rest your eye on. And those are things, and then if you look at the way she used value, and the way she put layering on, um, in watercolor, that's a very difficult process. And um, she just did an amazing job. It's a beautiful piece. It's in the zone. Boundary Waters is right back there. And um, there's a couple things that are very striking about this piece. First, the first thing I'll point out is the use of the format. You have an elongated, there are five fundamental formats. I, I think many of you know that, some of you may not. They are uh, portrait, landscape, square, elongated portrait, and elongated uh, landscape. Randy used an elongated landscape format here. The choice of format is very effective for this kind of a painting because it's about the landscape and that elongated landscape in this particular scene the format choice just really helps the story. Go back to my original statement about, I would look for uh, the story, and then I would look for what are the supporting elements of the story, how do they use composition, formatting, blah, 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 to, to accentuate the story, not take away from it. And Randy, that's, that's what I see there. Compositionally, I see a very strong L-shaped composition. Your use of washes is amazing. Um, the wet and wet, uh, I'm, I'm just stunned and amazed at how beautiful you do that. But then look at where the boat and the figures, it's a boat shape, 
And then shadows, of course, on the water. Just masterfully done in watercolor, which is uh, which is just such a difficult thing to do. If you don't paint watercolor, you need to paint watercolor to appreciate just how difficult that is and how skillful this piece is. But the bulk of the figures are sitting again on a, a golden mean kind of coin and just it, it creates the, the intrigue. The, the little fog bank behind them, it has, I see a spiritual quality to that. It's just got this connectedness to nature and to the scene, and it's just a beautiful story. It makes me want to know what's going on in that boat. Why are they there? You know, and then it, wants, it makes me want to know more about the landscape that they're, they're in. Uh, so um, those are some things I saw about that piece. Uh, an amazing piece. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. The choice of uh, scale of the piece is amazing. It really, um, it, it just, I, I don't think you could tell this story without this, this side this as well, as effective, without choosing the scale of this piece. Now, when I see this piece, I see an abstracted piece. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my interpretation <coughs> on this, but I see Colorado in this piece. I see, the rain clouds, I see the mountains, I see almost a geologic uh, crop, uh, section, you know, uh, it's almost like he took the earth and he sectioned it, and I see veins coming up from the lower left in red, and then right in the center um, of that vein, I'm going to go point to it just because it's such a, a, a pretty cool idea, right here is gold flat, it's like buried in the landscape of the of the shifting ground like gold. So 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 why is that important? To me it could be about the Colorado landscape, it could be about actual gold, or it could be about the humanity in Colorado and how gold is buried deep in in, in shifting mysterious places. You find it in the most interesting place. You find gold. You find people, you find the influence of people. The lyrical uh, lines of, um, of those little swirls that go across the piece um, remind me of music. It's called uh, Help me Song of the West. Song of the West. So when I saw it, I of course thought the, something about the wind called Mariah or something, you know, some Western or something like that. But more than that, when I look at this piece, I hear Walt Whitman speaking. Song of myself, you know. Um, I hear, um, I hear. Um, Whitman was so taken by humanity. Leaves of grass is about the, the individual blade of grass, but combined, it's about humanity. Uh, so I see this lyrical song of myself. I hear the the Whitman, uh, y'all. Yeah. When I look at this piece. You're familiar with that from uh, what's the movie? Dead Poets Society. Dead Poets Society. When he talks to the students and he says, There's a yelp of Whitman, it's a cry. That's what the definition of that is. It's a cry, but it's an emotional cry about how unique we are in our place in this universe. And so when I look at that piece, uh, Lyndon, I hear the yelp of Walt Whitman, right? And so, very beautiful. Thank you. Thank you.